What more could you want from a week ahead? Chris Hare, economist from Investec, joins us to talk through the main events. So Chris, the IMF appears likely to approve the Chinese yuan as a reserve currency by adding it to the fund's special drawing rights basket. Though with China's stock suffering its worst sell-off since late August, what kind of reaction will you be expecting from the global markets? In terms of market reaction to this, not much at all, really. Uh, the yuan's inclusion in the SDR basket has been very well trailed. Uh, the IMF staff recommended the yuan's inclusion into the basket a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so the board's approval today looks pretty much nailed on. So we don't expect too many surprises that will provide a jolt to markets. Um, in terms of the falls that we saw in Chinese indices last week, well, perhaps some macro factors going on, weak profits data, uh, but also some announcements from authorities on uh, kind of curbs to leverage financing. But some of that stuff looks quite idiosyncratic. So we don't expect too much volatility from China, at least this week. OK, well, the ECB is expected to step up its QE program on Thursday. Yet are you expecting this move to be a long term solution to pump life into the European economy? Yeah, well, extra QE and extra stimulus more generally from the ECB is part of, but not the be-all and end-all in terms of solving problems in the Eurozone. Now, our view is that uh, the ECB is going to expand QE somehow, perhaps through an extension in its duration. Might also cut the deposit rate uh, that banks uh, have to uh, charge for holding uh, their deposits at the ECB to minus 0.4%. Now, that could help by particularly putting some downward pressure on the euro, which can boost demand and inflation, but you need a combination for years of ultra-loose monetary policy, uh, prudent fiscal policy, and possibly labor market reforms too, and those three things working together to really get the Eurozone economy growing from a pretty low growth world to something that looks more like uh, what we'd hope to see going forward. Right, and just a day later, key US jobs data is set to be released in what has been widely predicted to be confirmation of the Fed's decision to raise rates later in December. How do you assess what is likely to be a major decoupling? I mean, as far as the likelihood of Fed tightening, it looks almost nailed on. And if we have decent job numbers on Friday, anything like as strong as they were last month with unemployment at 5%, then we should see some gradual and limited rate rises in the US. Now, an implication of that is the prospect of a very low interest rate environment in the zone for quite some time to come and a less low interest rate environment in the US. And then what that will lead to is very possibly more euro weakness relative to the dollar and the euro reaching parity against the dollar, not a central case, but it is a possibility. So we expect that dynamic of different interest rates and weakness in the euro to persist for quite some time. A lot to look forward to. Thank you, Chris. Be sure to check back to see how these market movers develop throughout the week by joining Monica Gibson for our wrap-up show. See you next time.